everyone it's Ross and in today's video we are going to be planting out a lot of fig trees um, so I want to show you guys how I'm doing this take you along for this little journey uh, it's still gonna be a lot of work and I'm gonna be filming probably for a pretty long time maybe you guys will stick around for the whole thing I'll try to make this interesting as we go we have done many videos so far though on the topic of planting fig trees and I've really got the method down here for what it is that I'm going to be doing. You can obviously do different things yourself and I'd recommend you do different things depending on your climate. Here in my climate, because it's so cold, uh, because we have not a whole lot of heat early in the season, we're going to focus on getting these trees higher. We're planting them higher above grade. We did a whole bunch of experiments this winter time and last winter. So we've done it for two years in a row now where we've had different trees planted throughout the yard. Some in raised beds that were a foot high. Others have been planted about four inches above grade. So through the process of this experiment, we've been able to figure out just how hardy these trees can be and just how high I can plant them. I think a good, a good height above grade to plant them is about four inches somewhere between four to six inches. And then what you're gonna do is, since we've already have some mounds here that we've created that are complete, we essentially just cover that root ball, the top six inches of it, add in some extra soil, and then we put in some brick. In this particular location, we have lots of extra brick here. And then on top of the native soil, or on top of additional soil, will be these stones and these are more for or ornamental appeal but also the stones and the bricks you can see here's a real finished product right here the stones and the bricks really add a lot of heat early in the season and heat up the soil you can see my trees are already actively growing here it's very difficult to see but this bud here is pushing the same thing back in here we're in late april today's april 25th can see this tree is also growing all these trees have been cut back to the base and are now re-sprouting from the base and even my in-ground trees that were here all winter time aka this pastiliere you can see is now growing so this is the time of the year it's been quite early actually this year that things are really starting to get going but certainly all this excess heat that i'm creating in this little area is really gonna help and I really recommend not only creating a mound in a similar climate to mine but also adding in these rocks adding in these stones do not use mulch um, if you have mulch I, re I highly recommend mulch for just about every single tree that I have in the ground every single bed if you look around my yard there's wood chips or straw on every single bed except for the garden beds as you can see here and except for the fig trees because the the mulch really cools down the soil and that's not what we want so if you have mulch and you want your trees to really get going earlier in the season to give you earlier fruits more fruits a larger tree you name it it's going to be compounding interest you need to take away all that mulch and then put it back on later in the season when things are probably a bit more dry when things are a lot more um, a lot more warm so that's kind of the whole basis of what we're doing here is we're creating a mound a one foot high mound and they're not all exactly a foot but that's the ideal goal is to build this up so that if I were to take a measuring tape and measure it from the ground all the way up that would be a foot. We're also doing, if you haven't noticed over here, what looks a bit strange. These are some cuttings that we just got. We bought these off eBay from Herman. This is the Vasilika Black variety that I figured be worth a shot here. He's only 20 minutes away from me. So this variety, instead of trying to root these in pots like we've done with all these other varieties here, you can see some of them. Um, it's too far away from that right this is like two months of growth right here this is two months of the cutting being in the pot 
the cutting doing its thing inside then we have to adjust it I'd rather not have to go through that so we're just gonna stick we stuck them all in the ground here it's called ground rooting people do this all the time with figs I've done it last year the old man way of propagating fig cuttings is where you just take a long branch off a tree and just stick that right in the ground it turns into a large tree in no time we're also doing this in other parts of the yard and I've used parafilm depending on the cutting depending on how many cuttings I had depending on how valuable the cuttings were parafilm is a really good idea he, over here is a stick that we had put in of a variety that I am really looking forward to this is uh, from something else but we parafilmed this and now you can see it's breaking through that parafilm and the cuttings not getting desiccated this way this is really important if you're going to be doing it like this and if you don't have a cutting that's really fresh that's really thick the chances of it not desiccating to some degree is pretty low so i would recommend that if you don't have many cuttings like i have here herman sends like seven or eight cuttings every time you you buy from him so um you know, I decided the thick ones here, there's about four thick ones. One of those four is going to take. One of those four is going to have real minimal desiccation, and um, I probably don't have to worry about it. So all we did was score the bottom of the cutting, stuck it in the soil, added in the, the, um, the brick here. We're going to add in the stones as well, really heat up the soil because that heat, like I said, the metabolisms really get going of these plants, these trees. Um, you can also see that we've kind of really already set this up into where everything's going to go. Um, everything here is two feet apart. Back in here it's going to get a little close because we're going to have um, not just two trees in this row but also three. So one, two, and then three. This garlic back in here we're going to have to move it. We're going to have to dig this up and transplant it somewhere else. Maybe fill in some gaps along the garlic back in here I'm not sure I know garlic really doesn't transplant well I imagine so it's kind of a shame but you know that's what careful planning that's why careful planning is so important uh, we've also done other things to go back to the ground rooting here is that once we put them in the ground a large tree like this guy here we still have to put him in the ground we're gonna cut him all the way back to the base and then whatever is left over that wood up top we just stick that in the soil as well that's going to net us another tree. We could then sell that tree, put that tree in a container. We could trade it away. We could give it to a friend. You can see here's one already that's putting out leaves. And I bet you there's some uh, roots attached to the bottom of this already. Um, this is also, I want to mention, a pretty common thing that people do is that they create these beds in the ground for in-ground rooting. You don't have to do this in a pot. You don't have to keep them on a pot and leave them outside all day. I actually think that's probably a bit more of a disadvantage than if you were just gonna stick them in the ground. Um, a propagation bed works really well. You gotta make sure it's really um, aerated, the soil is well draining, and that can really, um, really turn your small, weak cuttings into large trees by the end of the season. Um, I also want to mention that this whole bed here, the location, location, location is extremely important. It's really well draining because it's on a slope coming down this way. It's also south facing. It gets sun all day. Um, we do have some trees here that we're going to stay on the wall. These little small five gallon trees. These are the production trees in containers for next year. But for the most part, these trees really will not be shaded out too much and then we'll get sun almost all day. Um, what I've decided to do because of the way the sun works is that I'm putting the larger or the smaller trees in this row and the larger trees if possible or the more vigorous trees if possible in this row. Also more vigor towards the back. And again, this is not really totally known, but this is south over here. So if the sun's over here, 
I want the taller trees going up towards the back, the more vigorous trees going up towards the back. Um, so, you know, this is, again, this is only about a third of what I'm planting today. <laughs> but uh, I want to take you guys along for this and show you guys exactly how I'm doing it. Um, so let's really get into it right now. We could talk more about this as we go. But I guess we'll start over here. Put you guys down. <sighs> Try to get you guys situated in a pretty decent location as we go. Now the issue with this tree, let's actually see first what it looks like. Now when I'm taking these trees out of the pot, turning it upside down and pushing this out. Look at that, that's a real, actually a really good root system. These trees are really well rooted. These are the trees, by the way, that I'm gonna be selling. Um, I mean, these are for personal use, obviously, but these are indeed the trees that I'm gonna be selling just like that. They look just like that. Now that I've got my spot here, um, I could get my measuring tape if I wanted, but I know that it's gotta be at least two feet away from the tree to its left. And I just wanna take a little bit out of here because we are gonna situate this pot. We are gonna plant this a bit deep, about right here. And that's gonna essentially level this out to about a foot. We can cover this. We're gonna cover most of this that we can you guys can see all this is that this we're trying to cover this these few buds here if we cover this um, every single year it's gonna re-sprout from here so we want to make sure that a portion of this is indeed covered and we'll be all right now what I should do and what I think I will do as we go because we don't have a real we don't have a ton of soil to really build this up with. So I'm just kinda gonna get it in its spot here so it's not going anywhere. We can add in the potting soil, but I think what I'm gonna do is actually take soil from over here. And we're just gonna add this in. So we're kind of digging down deep around the trees. And then creating that mound that we want. Can see what I just did here. Hopefully, you guys can see this pretty well. Bear with me here, guys. I don't have a, I don't have a helping hand here, but we are going to learn a lot as we go along. Now, some of you guys are probably wondering at this point. What do I do if I live in a different climate than Ross? Because I don't live near Ross. I live in freaking Egypt, you know? I live in... I live in... Uh, <laughs> East Jabip. <laughs> There's all kinds of weird little things I could say. But... We're going to keep it PG-13. But anyway... Um, what I want to say here is that... If you guys live in a really dry place, let's say California or Arizona, this is not gonna be the style of planting for you. In fact, you're gonna wanna do the opposite of what I just did. You're gonna wanna bury this thing real deep. You're gonna actually wanna dig a hole three feet, five feet deep. You got a tree that's super long. The ideal scenario is you grow this out as a single stem whip get that tree to about five feet tall, and then plant the tree about three feet deep in the ground. 
So that way only about two feet above the uh, the trunk here. So if the, the trunk is five feet tall, three feet of the trunk is gonna be buried all the way underground. And only two feet will remain above ground. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a super massive, strong tree in no time and it's gonna form roots all along the stem, just like rooting a fig cutting. And that's also gonna help with moisture. The tree is gonna become stronger. It's gonna be a bit cooler down there for you as well. But for me, <laughs> I need the heat. <laughs> I need less water. <laughs> so everything I'm doing is like the complete opposite of what most of you guys are probably gonna do. All right, so the last thing here is I wanna add a little bit of soil on top. The other issue here I forgot to mention is that we need to label these, these things. Can't forget what is planted here. That would be a huge mistake. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the labels, I'm gonna get the tags later. But for now, I'm gonna leave the pot that has the label on it, I'm gonna leave it just right over here, so I know what this is. All right, now we need to get our brick behind you guys. And I'm gonna put the brick here because I don't want the, the rocks to travel downwards towards me. So we'll do that like that. Kind of use this as a way to edge things out too. It's just gonna look nice. This will keep the mound nice and maintained. And if I take you guys and show you, a lot of that stem is now buried. And we still have to add the rocks. We'll come in here with the rocks as we go along, or as we're done. So let me get to more of this here. Put this pot with this tree. Now I know what that is. And we're gonna do this one now, next. Now the tree I just planted, by the way, is the Trace Displace. It's a very early variety. Super early variety. It's as early as Ron de Bordeaux, Improved Celeste, Floria, etc. So this tree needed a bit more time to root itself out, but it still looks pretty good. It also seems to be quite a vigorous variety. It did take some damage up here, but I think it's all right. Come right on in here with our shovel again and do the same thing we just did. I think that's pretty decent there. Maybe even actually a little bit deeper. This is a tall cutting. The growth is really high up, so I wanna make sure that that I'm gonna cover this stem here. Otherwise, the tree may not live throughout the winter and may have to re-sprout from the roots, which could be very difficult for a young tree to, to accomplish. So, just gonna make sure, in fact, what I could do is, eh, I could plant it on a slant if I wanted. I think this is okay. You can see that damage there, that's from humidity wasn't really adjusted well to the humidity here in the process of me transitioning them outside. We had a really hot day yesterday. It was like 80 degrees and the humidity was quite low. So you can see now the stem is still not covered. That's an issue. So what we need to do is come in here 
take some more soil. This actually is becoming a bit of a booby trap here. <laughs> I need to maybe figure out a different way to do this because I have I don't have room to walk. I don't have room to dig. It's also raining all of a sudden. So that kind of sucks, but hopefully it doesn't rain too much. We can continue filming. I'm gonna add this actually to this tree. And we just did. Now, I don't know if I really want to go any higher just yet with this because these leaves are real important. So I think we're going to hold off on adding more soil to this location, but inevitably we do need to cover it up to about here. So we need to come back in here with rocks, come back in here with the uh, excess soil and add that in. I just don't want to cover these leaves such a young tree. We will add this brick for now. We can always take that off. It's not a huge deal. Now, I'm not going to even water these in, believe it or not, because these guys, <laughs> the soil is so wet, it's so heavy, it doesn't really need it in this climate. It's going to rain all week, um, starting today and going into the weekend. It's going to be raining, so I really don't have to water these things. That's the beauty of my climate and the beauty of planting things at the right time. If you don't plant things at the right time, you're just going to create more work for yourself. You know, this is the spring. This is obviously when we should be doing this kind of thing. Here's the tag so we don't lose the variety name you know so either the spring or the fall depending on where you guys live this is this is when you're supposed to be planting all these different things now I want to do one more I guess for you guys because I'm not gonna lie you're slowing me down a little bit <laughs> I'm gonna put you guys on a little rock here that's not really working. Okay, let's see what you guys can even see. I may have to adjust you guys, but what we are gonna do next is we're gonna plant two varieties in the same exact hole. We have here is Colonel Littman's Black Cross from Just Fruits and Exotics. Actually, this is from Just Fruits and Exotics years ago. Um, this is before they had ran out of the trees. Someone had got this, fruited it, really loves it. So this is, in my mind, the original Colonel Littman's. This is the Just Fruits and Exotics Black Madeira Knot. So this is what they sent out as Black Madeira, but turns out it's not Black Madeira. So a lot of people actually think this is Colonel Littman's. And that's why they had ran out of their trees of Colonel Littman is because they had to cover their, their butts and they sent out, they sent out this one. So we'll take this out of here. I actually got this tree here from Big Bill a lot of you guys know who Big Bill is. Take this guy out. There we go, nicely rooted out. You can see that there, it looks good. 
And uh, essentially, we're just gonna put these, again, like I was saying, in the same exact hole. I wanna get my measuring tape real quick. So this is the spot we want it in. That's where I'll dig. All right, so we're just gonna stick these both in the same hole here. One's gonna grow out in the other direction than the other. And that's kind of how we're gonna kind of keep track of what is what. I need to make this hole a bit bigger. Got them situated. This is a really good way of figuring out if the tree is exactly the same as the other because they're in the same exact hole. If they're in the same hole, they're in the same location, same environment, and they're putting out basically the same figs, then you know that it's the same thing. We're also doing this with grafting, so by grafting the uh, two varieties under the same rootstock, they're literally growing in the same environment. It doesn't get any better than that. It's the same tree. So this is how we're gonna figure this out and how we're gonna know if this is true into what everybody is thinking that these are the same. get our stones and the objective here it's pretty simple we just want to make sure that we're getting one layer of stone covering the top here I don't think this is really going to act as the best winter insulation for the roots so we all gonna have to do we are gonna have to do is come in here and put down lots of straw and cover these roots and really insulate the soil and keep it warm Putting down about a half a bag per tree. And this is a this is a half cubic foot bag. What's really weird, or what I have been hearing, <laughs> what's really weird, is that we have been getting um, good ideas from other people. Instead of rocks, instead of brick, you could use concrete, big boulders from the Delaware. I could go over to the Delaware and get big boulders. Um, really, there's so many different things you could do just to warm up this soil that I'm not saying that rocks are the best way. This is what I'm using because this is an ornamental, has an ornamental appeal to it, it looks nice. This isn't my backyard, I need to make this look pretty sharp. And it also gets the job done. Believe it or not, these rocks are gonna conserve a little bit of moisture, improve a little bit of that drainage.
and you can see there there's the finished product for these two trees all right everyone so it's the day after now and you can tell it's been raining um, it's quite dark in fact it's gonna rain I think in total an inch maybe more so us not having to water these in um, and doing this at the right time is really kind of paying off and this is kind of what the whole thing looks like each of these trees now I wanted to show you now what I would do is cut back the st. Martin here but st. Martin has like about like seven Brava on it so we're not going to do that also the black Madeira KK here that we planted is off to a great start I don't want to ruin that I'd rather eat more black Madeira than not and you can also see just how good some of these young trees actually do look and others <laughs> do not but with the right temperature these things will heat up real quick they should resume growth no problem as long as they have the a strong enough root system we should be all right and then back in here we still have actually two more plants to plant where this bag of rocks is um, we decided to put in three back in here rather than two which was my original plan so i think in total there's about 26 fig trees here if i count let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that's 24 plus another two so you're looking at 26 figs in this little space here it's actually kind of insane and the spacing's really close two feet apart in uh, in both directions so what this means for me is that this is really an experimental plot this isn't I'm not really expecting any of these trees to really survive the winter time. Um, there was one that we had just recently learned that we planted, uh, Fico Love from Italy. And this is a really old variety. And I have a feeling these old varieties, they've just withstood the winter. They've withstood the, the really nasty colds that can come in and kill these varieties. And if they've survived year after year, for you know hundreds of years they should be something that's reasonably hardy um, so out of all these trees here I think that one has the best shot of actually becoming a tree that could potentially survive the winter here but the rest of these I think chances are a bit low um, what could become an issue is that we also have <laughs> these really small production trees on the wall and these could they're so close to the actual figs themselves that I don't know there's gonna be some competition for light along here but it's not the end of the world it really isn't um, I think the spacing here two feet is the absolute closest I would go um, and this is not something I would do probably again this is only really for experimental reasons like I said finding out what is going to do well here in this climate in the ground whereas in other locations in the yard we have these trees planted three feet apart and that is really the absolute closest I would put them um, for a real proper spacing now what's going to probably end up working out is that these trees are going to probably need something like four feet minimum and if I have a tree for whatever reason we actually do figure out what variety is going to survive the winter here they're probably going to need maybe even six feet so it really depends on where you live what climate you guys are in but this is what I'm doing and I just want to point that out to you guys because this is again not everything that I'm doing is applicable perhaps in your climate or to you so it's really important to get that straight and understand that is that again if you live in somewhere that's really dry you may want to plant these things really deep you may want to create yourself a nice little um, reservoir rather than a mound that's going to have that water shed away you know also if i lived in, Cal in, uh, in florida where there's tons of rain even more rain than where i live you better believe i'm going to be planting my figs in a mound and I'm also going to be using probably a nematode-resistant rootstock 
such as LSU Purple. But this is really the uh, the finished job here. I do want to mention one or two other things before I let you guys go. We still have to add rocks to some of these trees, but because some of these trees are very um, weak and because I didn't actually get a chance to bury the stem on some of them, like you can kind of see this tree here, the stem is not buried, although the bottom stem is. Or this tree is probably a better example is that this stems way above grade and we need to protect that at some point I have to come in here once these trees get a bit larger I want to come in here and add in more soil to really build up the mound even higher and then what I'm gonna do is add on the rocks after that um, so I am gonna be selective on which trees I do end up putting down rocks for right now we did end up finding some rocks, which we then put on top of the soil. And then lastly, we have a Ficus Palmata hybrid called Iraqi Unknown. And this guy, I'm not even sure if he's gonna survive the winter at all. So this particular tree, because it's a hybrid between a different species of fig, I wanna plant this one actually quite deep. I wanna get this guy really deep down in the ground um, so that way we can really ensure that it's going to survive or hopefully it's going to survive. No, I don't know a single person who has tried growing in a, a hybrid, a, a Ficus palmata, Ficus carica hybrid here in this zone. So we'll see what happens. But uh, that's the finished product, guys. And I want to thank everyone here for getting to this point in the video. I really do appreciate it. Check us out, guys, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you got this far, you should definitely subscribe. And I'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. All right? Take care, everyone.